Hi guys, Johnny D here. Wanted to uh, get together with you for another Wednesday uh, webinar. You probably are thinking if you're on this morning's webinar, why are we doing another one? Well, that's because this guy didn't hit the record button. So um, a bit of a technical challenge there. Not a big deal because I don't mind actually going through this uh, again, and what I wanted to impress upon you guys is the importance of um, chemicals in the brain and how you sell. And that's really the big message today. As all of you know, every uh, Wednesday we talk about something, uh, a skill set, building it with uh, the real estate agent and broker. And today is no different. We're going to be talking about cortisone and the real estate agent. That's right, I said cortisone. Uh, and the real estate agent. So um, I know a little bit of a weird uh, topic there, uh, but I think you guys will get the gist when I get done. Let me go ahead and share my screen so you guys have everything. These are my notes that I've been taking. So uh, kind of creating this now so you guys have this as well. This stuff, it really pumps me up because I know that this is the exact thing that makes people a better salesperson. As real estate agents and brokers, we are all uh, salespeople and we need to know how to sell. sell. And the, the idea of you know, trickery and you know, um, tricking someone into the sale has nothing to do with a good salesperson. It's short-lived, if anything. Uh, but what does have everything to do with a really good salesperson is chemistry in the brain. Let me explain. So cortisol and the real estate agent, here we go. Uh, pretty much any experienced sales professional would agree that psychology plays an important role in the process of making a deal. Customers respond to certain triggers, methods, and behaviors. If you want to increase your revenue as an agent and broker, you shouldn't ignore this fact. While you don't have to stock your sales team with a bunch of psych majors, you should keep the following concepts in mind when you're making changes to improve sales performance. Now watch this. Neuroscience conquers a world full of gimmicks. What do I mean by that? Think about the last time you uh, had a slick sales gimmick personally influence you. More than likely, you've never really been influenced by this uh, sales gimmick. This kind of marketing really doesn't work. Good science is actually what Help make, helps make the sale. Let me explain what I mean. The decision to make a purchase is a complex process. It involves chemical and hormonal reactions that influence three, how many? Three uh, different areas of the brain. A person's instincts come from the so-called reptilian part of the basal ganglia. This section is concerned with safety and survival. See, I got that highlighted there, so check that out. The middle brain processes are emotional and involve memory, and rational thought occurs in the new brain, which processes language and facts. A sales pitch has to appeal to all three different levels of the brain while creating the proper chemical conditions to connect with your customer. If you were on our webinar last week, you know that uh, we just focused on trust and rapport and building that. Once you have that, then you can kind of go into this chemical type situation. Look at what I have highlighted here. Safety and survival, emotional, and language and facts. Those are the things that once you have trust and rapport, you need to be focusing on as a real estate agent and broker to get the sale. Now, picture and imagine you in a position of working with a buyer that's looking for a house or looking with a seller of a house uh, or a condo, or maybe even looking for a uh, place to rent for a renter uh, client of yours. Watch this that I have highlighted in blue. This is where the cortisol comes in. When a customer's cortisol levels are elevated, they're in the mood for something to calm them down. That's a perfect time to deliver a pitch about how your service as an agent or broker will cure whatever they're worried about. Now, remember, cortisol is a chemical that by definition, let me see if I can switch my uh, screen here. 
by definition, check this out. This is the this is what cortisol looks like. I know I'm not trying to turn this into a science experiment here, but if you look over to the right side of the screen, that's actually what it looks like in the brain, the chemical makeup of that. It's an organic molecule, and we'll not, we're not going to get uh, into detail there, but cortisol is a steroid home hormone in the glucocorticoid uh, class of hormones. When used as a medication, it is known as hydrocortisone. You've all heard of that many times. It's produced in many animals, mainly in the zona fasciolata and the adrenal cortex in the adrenal gland. It's produced in other tissues in lower quantities. Now watch this. Um, it, it is released with a diurnal cycle and its release is increased in response to stress and low blood glucose concentrate. What we're focused on is this stress right here, either physical or biological. It's an organism's response to a stressor, such as an environmental condition. Stress is the body's method of reacting to a condition such as a threat, challenge, or physical and psychological barrier. Again, I'm not trying to turn this into a sales or a science uh, lesson here, but um, cortisol is the chemical that uh, gets released by the brain when stresses arise. Well, why does somebody sell a house? Why is somebody looking for a house? Why is somebody looking for a place to rent? Um, all of those uh, to the average person add stress to their life and a little bit of cortisol is released because of that. The more you talk about that situation, the more cortisol will be released. Now, this isn't a, a chronic situation where it's released over a month. If you start talking about the person's situation that is causing their problem, instantly cortisol will, is going to be released if there's stress involved in that moment. Now, I'm certainly not advocating that you as an agent or broker uh, you know, purposely harm somebody by bringing up um, things that cause stress. But uh, at the same time, I am asking you to um, acknowledge and highlight that problem that that seller, the buyer, or the renter is going to have so that you can get this cortisol going a little bit and, and have this chemical release in the brain. Um, really quick here, and then I'll get off this science uh, lesson. Cortisol and the stress response have been known uh, deleterious effects on the immune system. That can't be good, by the way. Um, high levels of perceived stress and increases in cortisol have been found to lengthen the wound healing time in healthy male adults. So as there's more stress, there is more cortisol um, released. So when a customer's cortisol levels are elevated, they're in the perfect mood for something to calm them down. That's a perfect time to deliver a pitch about what your service is as an agent or broker and, what, and how your service is going to cure whatever they're worried about. So you, in your sales meeting, in your listing meeting, um, in your meeting with a buyer looking for a house or a place to rent, you want to elevate that cortisol release just a little bit so uh, that they're in the perfect position to be able to um, uh, accept something that's going to calm them down. In the sales process, we call this framing, preparing the environment so that when you offer your um, product or service, in this case service, the client or customer is in a better position to handle that. Let me give you another example of this. Um, if I was selling hamburgers and our customer that was buying the hamburgers wasn't hungry, it probably wouldn't matter, um, you know, how good our hamburger was, the quality behind it, you know, maybe we uh, have all organic in our hamburger. It probably wouldn't matter if our client or customer is not hungry. But let me ask you a question. If we took our client and customer and increased their hunger, for food in general, maybe even specifically to the hamburger, would it really matter the quality of our hamburger or would they just accept it because they're hungry? They'll eat anything. You've probably been in this position in your life uh, in, in the past. Think about that when you're framing someone to deliver your product or service, in this case, your service as a real estate agent. Um, you wanna get them hungry for your hamburger. 
You want to get the cortisol levels released in their brain so that they're in the position. They're wanting something to calm them down. What's going to calm them down? It's going to be your service that you're delivering to that client. And it would go something like this. Let's say that Tom is in Northwest Indiana and he's looking to move to Florida with his family because he's taking another job. And Tom knows he's going to have to sell his house in Northwest Indiana, and that's causing some stress for him. He doesn't uh, really like to sell uh, his house because he's got a lot of memories there. He loves his neighbors, things like that. And they're moving to uh, Florida for a new life. Um, so there's a little bit of stress with that, not to mention the family that's involved, the wife, things like that. It's a brand new thing for them. So there's some underlying stress there. So you might go into that situation like this. Hey, Tom, tell me what's happening with uh, your deal. What is it? Why is it that you're selling? And really, what is the ultimate thing you'd like to see accomplished here? And Tom's going to say something like this. Well, you know, I took a new job and I'm moving to Florida and uh, we've been in this house for eight years. Uh, we like the house. We love the neighborhood. Our kids are in school. Uh, they love their friends at school. We love our, our uh, friends here locally, like I said, our neighbors. And so... Um, we're also concerned whether the house will sell, will it, whether it will sell for the price that we need to get and uh, things like that. So it's, it's a pretty emotional time for us. And then I would say something like this. Well, Tom, I can certainly see that. You know, one of the things that um, uh, I noticed is that, you know, you've been here for a long time, but is there any excitement about starting a new life in Florida? Well, yeah, there is actually, because not only am I making more money with my job, but we're in a really great area of Florida, right near Orlando. And I'm really excited about having the kids, you know, hit the water parks and the theme parks down there. And it's just going to be a really cool change to uh, them growing up. Perfect. So when you get to that point, you kind of let them off the hook a little bit. What I, what it would be really cool here for you to do is go back into the pain a little bit and elevate that cortisol before you give them their solution. Now, I know this sounds funny, but as a real estate agent and broker, you're really acting like a pharmacist in this case. Somebody has a, an issue, they need a prescription, the pharmacist gives you that prescription, and it's what that prescription does that takes care of the issue. You're acting the same way. That's why the responsibility of managing these chemicals as a sales professional is so important. 99% of the, the real estate agents and brokers out there don't even train on this. They don't even think about this. They're all features and benefits. Oh, you know, our company has been around for 40 years. We have agents that have been in the business for 25 years. We market your property on Zillow and Trulia. That's ridiculous. We don't sell by that. It's not the best way to sell. Selling by emotion in science is the best way to sell. So here's how you get back into the pain. And then here's how you become the, um, uh, pharmacist. You ready? Here we go. So Tom, you know, let me ask you a question. What would happen if, you know, you don't sell the house uh, uh, in the time frame you want and you don't get the money that you're looking for? What, I mean, what's that mean for you and your family? Oh my gosh, Sean, um, that would be, that'd be a problem. You know, we'd be down there, we'd have two mortgages to balance that would cause some financial uh, stress and we're just really not looking for that. Plus, you know, I'm sure my, myself or my wife would have to come back and forth and that would add not only uh, increased costs, but, you know, it's just that we, we really don't want that to happen. And, and uh, Tom, real quick, what if you, uh, what about price? What if you, uh, I know you're looking for a specific number. What would happen if you weren't able to get that number? Well, I don't know. We're really looking to take that money and make improvements to our new house or we're looking to take that money and make a, another investment uh, down there. So that wouldn't be the greatest thing for us either. So in those two circumstances, we just elevated the client and customer's cortisol by having them think about stress. Um, the more detailed, the better. Uh, if you can get into what we call in writing a picture frame paragraph, where you're actually creating a movie in the client or customer's head, that's even better. Think about that when you're, you're talking about that. But this is how you're going to be the pharmacist when you say, well, Tom, I got great news. Would you like some good news? And I'll just call a time out there. This is where you're injecting the solution for their stress level. They're in the perfect position for you to, to deliver your services. Well, Tom, I got great news for you. Um, 
you know, what we do as a real estate uh, company and particularly myself is we've worked with sellers of property like you hundreds, if not thousands of times. And it doesn't even raise my blood pressure what you're uh, wanting to do and what you're wanting to achieve, selling the house in a specific amount of time and getting top dollar for your house. Where you're at and where you need to get, I don't think is going to be a problem. We've got an excellent way to market that to accomplish those two things. Let me ask you a question. Now watch what I ask Tom. Let me ask you a question, Tom. Um, how would that feel to be able to sell your house in a short amount of time and get the uh, actual dollar amount that you're looking to get? How would that feel? Um, and Tom's gonna be like, oh man, if you guys could do that for us, that would be great. I mean, we wouldn't have to worry about two houses. We wouldn't have travel back and forth. We could really kind of focus on our new life down in Florida. Man, that would just feel awesome. And so at that point, you've got that. Um, there's other chemicals that are happening that we're going to talk about in a second, but you've got that client or customer in a great spot to be able to um, you know, continue with your services. Let me give you a couple of other things to think about. Take a landing page, for instance. The overall design could generate an emotional response that appeals to the middle brain. If you have the right kind of headline that's shocking enough to surprise your customers in a good way, then it could release adrenaline to excite the reptilian brain. Remember, that one has everything to do with safety and survival. Negative headlines could cause an increase in stress, which raises cortisol. When a customer's cortisol levels are elevated, they're in the mood for something to calm them down. In a moment, we're going to be talking about something called NLP or, or Neuro Linguistic Programming. Don't worry about that now. It's a, it's a little bit more detailed. But notice when I'm talking to Tom, I'm in a calm manner. Um, I might even be doing something like this, mimicking um, a um, uh, meditation type scenario. Um, that has everything to do with something called NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. And we're going to go into that for a second, but notice that when their cortisol levels are elevated, I'm, I've got them framed in the perfect mood to take uh, the prescription that I'm going to give them. If somebody is not hungry, they're probably not going to buy your hamburgers. And I know I'm going off on a couple of different tangents with analogies, but you got to get your client or customer hungry for the services that you're going to provide. This does. This is why I hark on all the people that I'm working with to do videos, to do uh, posts on social media, to get your customers hungry for the service that you're going to provide, so that when they are hungry, they need your hamburger more than they need anything else. Okay. So uh, again, that's a perfect time to deliver a pitch about how your service as an agent or broker will cure whatever they're worried about. You simply need to know the right way to frame your pitches. So let's gear a pitch to your customers' brains. Let's go completely away from the real estate field as a real estate agent and broker and do something a little bit different here. Say, for example, instead of an agent broker, you're a company that sells special artesian breads to an e uh, through an e-commerce site. These gluten and preservation-free loaves are attracting, attractive to customers uh, who become aware of the harmful chemicals and pesticides used in the production of mass market food. In this example, you should not be trying to sell them bread. You should instead be trying to sell them uh, an appealing, eco-friendly, healthy lifestyle. Educated customers who are aware of the dangers inherent in products sold by regular retailers may be willing, watch this, to pay up to five times as much for your bread, provided they're convinced that they're buying a lifestyle. So if I was selling mattresses, which I'm not selling, but if I was selling mattresses, I wouldn't be selling the features and benefits of the mattress. I'd be selling them on the lifestyle of what it would be like to get the best night's sleep you ever had. What would your day be like? Um, you know, how much more relaxed would you be? Uh, how does that affect your family? In other words, I'm selling the lifestyle, not the features and benefits of the mattress. They can read that off a tag. The same thing with you as a real estate agent. You need to be selling the lifestyle of what it's like to be in the house that you're about to sell them. So for instance, instead of saying, you know, this house is this much square feet and this many bathrooms and bedrooms and this type of thing, you need to be selling them on the fact, can you imagine sitting in this family room and your lazy boy? 
where you're sit back like this and you are watching your favorite show or your favorite movie with your family. How does that feel? Can you imagine that? Or can you imagine yourself, you know, out in the backyard uh, barbecuing and, and having friends and family over? That's what you need to be selling, the lifestyle, not the features and benefits. Anybody can do that. And that's really what novice real estate agents and brokers do rather than do some of the things that we're talking about here. Why do we sell the lifestyle? Because it releases different chemicals in the brain. And when different chemicals are released, different actions are taken. Um, think about things, think about decisions that people make when they're in love. Like they make different decisions than they would make if they weren't uh, in love. Or think about when you know somebody's in danger, a family member or a good friend, you make different decisions immediately, values change and priorities change. The same thing here with selling. Wholesalers can use this same psychological marketing trick to manage price points. By creating a sense of urgency, wholesale companies can make buyer to buyer buyers, B2B uh, buyers feel like they need to take action now so they're not left behind. It's the same concept as using a shocking headline to manipulate cortisol and adrenaline levels on a much larger scale. Again, as a real estate agent and broker, how does this apply to your business? Are you using this in sales? Are you using this in getting your customers hungry for your hamburger? Are you making videos in that way? Are you posting on social media that way? Are you using this in general conversation when you're going to a listing appointment, when you're going to uh, help somebody that's looking to buy a house or a condo or maybe even rent? Best of all, there's a way to program your customers and clients to make uh, the best decisions for everything involved. And this is where it comes into changing someone's mental state. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about this later in January and more in February, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of history now. Remember, last week's webinar was about building trust and rapport. This week's webinar is about changing uh, the chemistry in the brain, acting like a pharmacist. Uh, with your clients and customers, but we're going to some of this other scientific stuff that is really going to make you the best salesperson uh, in your market. Reprogramming someone's mental state, even though it might sound like something out of a B-grade sci-fi movie, it's, it's fully possible to use the concept of NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming to help motivate customers and clients. When applied correctly, ads targeting using NLP techniques can ensure that everyone involved in the sales process makes beneficial purchasing decisions. While NLP dates back to the 1970s, as far as clinical psychology is concerned, sales teams are only starting to apply it to their needs. Marketing professionals have to establish a rapport with their customers and gain that trust. Exactly what we talked about on last week's webinar, NLP asks people to think about why they do and say, certain things. Once salespeople are aware of why they have certain habits, they can break them and try new things. Um, we'll talk more about this as we go along with our sales theme and, and sales training, but uh, chemicals in the brain. You're a pharmacist. I know you think you're a salesperson selling a three-bedroom, two-bath house, you know, 2,200 square feet, but you're really not. You're a problem solver, and this is going to tie perfectly into this spin-selling strategy that we're going to be talking about later in January and February, where we identify our client and customer situation and then problem, and then talk about what does that imply, raising that cortisone level, and then giving them the prescription they need, which is your services as a real estate agent and broker. That's it. Cortisol and the real estate agent. Remember, uh, wealth has nothing to do with money. Uh, success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you want to make it. Uh, I want to wish everybody good luck this week uh, with their real estate activities. And we will see everybody next week on our training uh, webinars. Have a great week, everyone.